Hello, and welcome to episode 29 of Sir Astro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint Saska Teft from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. Alongside a palette of green, grey and brown, I've chosen to enrich the colour scheme by introducing a simple blue light effect to represent light being given off by the screen that Saska is carrying. Let's take a look at the painting stages. After removing mould lines, I've chosen to prime Saska in white. We'll then apply the base colours and I've chosen to paint the screen on the device she's carrying with a pale blue. After that, we can shade the miniature and apply some highlights in the usual way. Our finishing touches will include painting the facial details and applying a subtle blue glaze to create the impression of light being given off from the tablet screen. Let's begin. I'm going to start by painting the goggles and the gloves with some German grey. You could also mix black with Mechanica's standard grey instead if you like. I'm now going to paint the display on the tablet screen, and you could really choose any colour you like for this, but I've chosen a light blue using a mix of white and Lothurn blue in a roughly 2 to 1 ratio. Next, I'm going to paint all of the metallic areas with a 2 to 1 mix of lead belcher and black. I'm using this for the bezel on the tablet, as well as the belt buckle, the gun, and the various tools hanging from the belt. For the skin, I'm using a roughly equal mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm now going to paint the hair with some Rhinox Hide. Next, we're going to paint the chest armour, and I'm using a roughly 2 to 1 mix of Rakarth Flesh and Screaming Skull. You may prefer to paint these straps brown or black. For the belt and boots, I'm using an equal mix of Monfang Brown and XV88. Next, I'm going to paint the shirt with a 2 to 1 mix of Death World Forest and a Mechanicus Standard Grey.
and I'm now painting the trousers with some storm vermin fur. Once all the base colours are neatly applied, we're ready to do some shading. I'm going to begin by shading the top with some Methonian camo shade. I'm then going to shade the skin with some Reichland Flesh Shade. For the boots and pouch I'm using Agrax Earth Shade. For the rest of the miniature I'm going to apply some Nuln oil thinned with an equal measure of Lamian medium. So I'm applying this to the hair, goggles, armoured top, gloves, trousers and the metallic accessories. Once that's dry, we're ready to apply the highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the armoured top, using the original Rakarth Flesh and Screaming Skull base tone. Here we want to try to emphasise the ribbed texture. I'm going to lighten this by increasing the amount of Screaming Skull in the mix. I'm going to focus my brightest highlights on the left side nearest the screen. I might even brighten this further with the addition of a little white, 
and focus just on the areas closest to the screen. Next, I'm going to begin highlighting the skin with some Cadian Flesh Tone. Here, I've decided to disguise the mold line as a strand of hair. I'm now mixing in some Kids Left Flesh for the next highlight. And now I'm using pure Kids Left Flesh. Finally, I'm going to push the highlights a little further by mixing in some white, and I'm focusing mostly on the left side of Saskia's face. Next, I'm going to highlight the green shirt, and I'm starting with some Elysian green, desaturated with some Dawnstone in a roughly 2 to 1 ratio. I'm then lightening this by mixing in some Ogren Camo. I'm now going to mix in some Screaming Skull to push the highlights further. You can see I'm focusing my brightest highlights on the left arm. I might even add a little white for the last few brightest highlights. I'm slightly over highlighting these areas to compensate for the darkening effect of the blue glaze I'll be adding later.
I'm now going to highlight the trousers, starting with a reapplication of Storm Vermin Fur. I'm then going to add increasing quantities of Carrick Stone for the upper highlights. For these brightest highlights, I'm focusing mostly on the left thigh. Here, I'm applying the final highlights with a small touch of pure Carrick Stone. Next, we're going to highlight the brown leather, using a roughly equal mix of Balor Brown and Scrag Brown. I'm now going to lighten this by mixing in some additional Balor Brown. For the hair, I'm starting with some Rhinox Hide, mixed with just a little Scrag Brown. and I'm now going to increase the amount of Scrag Brown in several stages.
This is as red as I would like to take things with the scrag brown. I'm now going to use some Agrax Earthshade selectively to push some of the highlights back down and to help smooth the transitions. I'm going to finish the hair off by mixing in some Ballow Brown and providing a few final bright highlights. Next I'm going to highlight the gloves and goggles and I've chosen to do this by mixing increasing quantities of Screaming Skull into the original German Grey. Because the goggles are so shiny, I'm going to go further still by mixing in some white in a couple of stages. Finally, I'm going to highlight the metallic areas with some Stormhost Silver, which I'm mixing with a little Carrick Stone. With the last of the highlights complete, we're ready for some finishing touches. I'm going to begin by painting the eyes using Vallejo's Ivory. For the pupil and iris I'm using German Grey.
I'm now going to provide a little eyeshadow with some thinned Gothor Brown. Once we're happy with the face, I'm going to create a blue glaze to give the impression of light being given off from the screen. To do this, I'm using Gwilliman Blue, mixed with just a hint of Waywatcher Green, and thinned down with a roughly equal quantity of medium. We can then brush this onto the parts of the miniature we imagine would catch light emitted from the tablet. We want to apply this in thin layers, and we want to avoid letting the glaze pool. We can apply several layers of this, perhaps reaching out as far as the side of the face, but concentrating the effect the closer we get to the screen. We're looking for a finished result that is both noticeable yet subtle. Once that's dry, I'm going to provide a protective matte spray. And I'm then rebasing the miniature in the usual way. One final optional touch might be to brush some gloss varnish onto the goggles and gloves. And this completes Saska Teft. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please note that further details concerning brushes and the scenic bases can be found in the video description below. As always, my very special thanks go out to the loyal patrons who are funding the production of this series. If you wish to become a patron, you can do so by clicking the link and pledging from as little as $1. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!